boys, girls, all of my traumaholics out there, <laughs> all of his lighting nights out there, welcome back to the Marvel Nerds. I'm joined here by Robert. Hey guys. And I'm Joe. And we're talking the BFG, the big friendly giant. Friendly giant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was a book by uh, Roald Dahl, yep. and it was a 1989 film as well. Uh, I, okay, so 1980. I thought it was 1899. No, no, it's, it, it's 1989. Yeah, it was not 1899. No, no, because the book wasn't written then. Yeah, that was not when the film was. Nope. Um, had you any history nope. with the book or the film? No, this is my first time seeing no. it. Okay, I saw the film, the earlier film, when I was a kid, and I read the story. And I thought it was one of Roald Dahl's best stories. And the film I thought was great too. Um, you know, as a kid, I hadn't seen it in a long time. So I already kind of knew what to expect, I guess, going into this in terms of the story and I guess kind of what to see. Uh, what'd you think? Not not <laughs> expecting, like not with no expectations pretty much. Uh, I knew nothing going into it. I saw the trailer. I always remember seeing his hand go in to grab uh, the little girl, Sophie. And I thought, I will see this because it's a Disney live-action fairy tale, but I have no expectations, good or bad. And, uh, what I don't you know. <laughs> that was the problem. I was kind of bored d during most of the, the movie. The, with the story, or I guess the execution, do, do you know? Like, what, was it the story that really... I didn't like the story. I just thought it was boring. I, I didn't find the main character of Sophie engaging uh the the bfg i thought was interesting i liked how he looked i like how all the like the seven other giants looked and i liked his plight uh with the giants because he's a runt of the giants but i don't know i just um i, I could have lived without this okay well i guess i could live without as well however i was a big fan of the bfg from directed by steven spielberg actually yep uh I think that shows because visually, it's, it's very stunning. It's a spectacle. Yeah. It's a spectacle. I like that. It really is. Visually, it, it really takes you somewhere else. And uh, the dream land, dream world, whatever that was, was absolutely just stunning. And I wish that I saw this one when I was a kid because I would have seen this movie hundreds of times. Yeah, you said that when we left the theater. Yeah, because th this was really just a visually stunning. And what's really, really unique about uh, the BFG here is the visuals perfect I thought they completely look like the time we're in that you'd expect 2016 however while the visuals seem new and updated the story and the dialogue seem still very classic seems from you know whatever the early 19th it, it has a very classic feel to it even though you see all these crazy visuals yeah, the, I loved all the the dream sequences, or, right. or, or how he made the dreams. I guess because right. we, I guess we didn't really see the dreams intact in this in people's heads, but um, right. But I loved how like they, they pulled all the colors together, um, like especially like the how like a red was a, like a nightmare, right. or, or like a blue was like a more happy positive dream. So I loved how he was like a dream giver or a dream maker. Right, I guess both because he gave he gave bad dreams and negative and positive dreams. I, I thought it was really cool. I did like that. Uh, the CGI of the giants looked really nice. Giant land looked really nice. I thought directing... Giant country. I, I'm saying giant land. Just because it's where they were. But yeah, giant country was cool. I like giant country. Thank you for correcting me. Um, I liked it visually. I just... It, to me, it's not an engaging story, which is weird since I like a lot of movies like this, but I just didn't find the story that interesting. Yeah, I mean, I guess since I knew what to expect, I don't know. I was always a fan of the story, and I thought it was done very well in this case. And I, I don't really have too many. I guess my only. It, it's kind of difficult to like really like to pick it apart, you know. For me, it is because yeah. we're going off nostalgia here, so I'm trying to think back. Yeah, to I the have story not. and everything. Um, however, I guess in terms of. Um, negatives I would say it does drag mm -hmm. I feel uh, when you get to the queen I feel like that section of the movie drags I thought the queen was funny no the I like I liked the queen I liked um I liked her uh, her lady-in-waiting I loved it when like 
the giant comes in and like all the guards are like oh crap like what are we gonna do with this giant or like there's a, there's a good there's a couple funny uh comedic gags i guess that right. are surrounding the queen which i thought were interesting right absolutely and i'm i'm just saying for that section of the movie i felt like it went on longer than it probably should have yeah uh that's really it though that's really all the negatives really this is just a movie what about the music what do you think about the music? The music, I felt like, was its own character. Yeah, it was The good. music added so much to the movie, and it was so strong, and it really, it fit every, yeah. every time it was played. It fit. It added. It, it was essentially, like I said, its own character, really. It, it was really, really prevalent in this movie, and was so dynamic. Yeah, the music was uh, awesome. I love the music. I loved it visually. I just, I didn't dislike it. I just... Just didn't like the story. It's like a weird thing, you know? Like, I like everything that happened. I just wish the story was a little different. Maybe a little faster. Um, but overall, I, mean, I, I would say for a nostalgia fan, like Joe, go see it. Uh, live action fairy tale Disney fans. Just check it out because they always manage to improve on their visuals every other time, you know? I just uh, I just hope this doesn't pull an Alice in Wonderland too. Yeah, I don't think it will. I think that's... You have to be a, a special kind of bad to me <laughs> Alice in Wonderland too so. alrighty well uh, I think I think we covered it yeah yeah so uh, even though I thought it was a little boring I would say still go see it just out of uh, for Disney fans and he definitely says go see it big fan yeah definitely alright All right, guys thank you so much for tuning in to this review of um, The Big Friendly Giant which is a uh, oxymoron quote to Lou Tunes yeah but <laughs> Yeah, Lutun said it in a tweet. Yeah. But big is implied in, in giant. Yeah, well, so, giant is already big. Yeah. So you can't get so, um, any bigger than a giant. The FG. The, the it just should be from giant. the giant. Yeah. And he's not even the biggest giant. No, he's, he's the, the, he's the he's run giant. giant. He's, he's yeah. only 24 feet. Yeah, so this is just... We need to go over these inconsistencies. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, these uh, poor uses of, uh, of English. Which yeah. actually, that was another thing that played throughout the movie that I thought was funny. Um, how the giants could they could speak, but they didn't know how to like properly speak. Yeah, and that's straight back to the original story. And they had a lot of classic dialogue from the story that it was just it. it I I knew they would have it in there because the, some of that stuff they really couldn't change. But it's still just heartwarming to see it. Yeah, I like in that. this updated kind of world. So it, it's yeah, I, I, awesome. I thought that was funny. I liked how like when like when uh, the giant meets the queen and little girl goes, he hasn't had any schooling. He's a giant. So, but like the queen's reaction to how he talks was funny. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that is our non-spoiler review of the BFG. Thank you so much for tuning in to our review. Uh, share your thoughts if you've seen it uh, in the comments below, and we'll talk real soon. Bye, guys.